the fuck do I get on this motherfucker? Personal questions. I'm more than do you to are, uh, do you um, promise to legalize cocaine and to put Renelder in prison? Who's Renelder? Renel she's a crazy bitch. That's all you need to know about her. Uh, well, I cannot governmentally approve a prosecution of Miss Renelder because I do not believe in that. I believe in uh, prosecution among peers. So I mean, vigilantism is a very, very good thing. And I mean, if you proof of, of her being crazy on your property and destroying any bit of your property then mm -hmm. or causing harm to you or your property then please be my guest to prosecute her in the way that you see fit on your yeah, property yeah I, I think by I need shooting her, her. I th yes by I, shooting I, her with your with your I, I, with your I, firearm I, I, I am a staunch believer in firearms I love firearms where are you supposed to go hey oh how you doing Fox uh just wait here outside I mean the candidates can go in there's a Hey, Let's check this shit out. Damn! Yeah. Just stay off the stage for now. Uh, or yeah, I guess you can go up, up there. there. Just watch the, the watch the chairs. Don't knock them over. The lights too. You too, Delano. Alright, good luck, y'all. Good luck. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hell yeah. What's up, I die? Oh shit! I say we skip all the voting and just fight to the death. Cause the fucking police never showed up. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the oh. fuck? <laughs> yes, right at the very end. Sir. Are you one of these two people? No, I'm one of the important people. Are you Mick Flash or Grant? Vernon, no, Freeman, you Freeman, Freeman, I need you're you. You're gonna here. need to not sit in the front row. Freeman, I need you up here. I'm feeling very unsecure right now. 10 4, boss. Why does he have a hard hat on? Of course. <laughs> I am. So accurate. So true. I gotta deal with this front row sitter. You can't sit there. There are and signs if I, and posted. I, if, I, if I can sit here, would you go out? What? You, make a better choice of sit here? you can't if sit Apollo, there. If a polo grant didn't put nothing, that means I can't sit here. Correct? Correct. I'm torn between going to Apollo and leaving my mare. I'll call him. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> <clears throat> Motherfucking mayor up in this bitch. <laughs> hey, Apollo. I got a front row sitter here. You want me to shoot him? Yeah, shoot him. Ooh. Shoot him in the face. He's only done five of me. I'm trying to shoot him. <laughs> Don't talk about my bear like that. Personally, I let him want. I want to let him talk about your bear like that. Okay. You're good. He said you're all wearing the same suit and you look fucking stupid. You have a helmet. You look in a fucking mirror sometimes. I didn't say that. Grant said that, and I look good. I didn't say you, I said he. I'm taking it off. I'm showing. Where the fuck do you find that t shirt? Sorry, the bomb is that he's a libertarian. <laughs> 
Nah. The big reveal is that he was wearing a libertarian t-shirt. The libertarian. That's right. Okay. Father Fox, it's a pleasure to see you here. Hey, too. Where the fuck does he find? What do you? What? What? What rack is that on? It's a pleasure. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to check. Father Fox. I, Father Fox. Huh. Do you remember my confessions? Do you remember every single confession I've ever told you? No. The monkey. The wall. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's me. How you doing, Fox? <laughs> Shit. Fuck, I haven't done confessions in a minute. Oh, Father Fox is in here? That's my boy. I'm, I'm, he got my vote. I don't even need to yeah. debate. I don't even need to debate. The people know who to vote for. Fox, I'm, I, you know what, honestly, if I don't get all the supporters I need and you get somehow more supporters than me, I will drop out and tell all my supporters to vote for you because I feel like you're a really good libertarian. Hell yeah. Yeah, I feel, I like him. All real libertarians yeah. became felons and then got expunged. Like a real libertarian. I don't know if that, but... <laughs> Money business. I haven't been expunged. Fog, did you mind moving out of the middle? <laughs> Do you have three guns? In the yes. <laughs> Yo, can I vote for this guy? No. Oh. I'm a felon. Ah! I kill cops. Allegedly. I mean, like... I love the free bird. No, the front rowers. Oh, okay. Never mind. Sorry. Yeah, there is. See, that's my Christmas present. Specifically, this seat and like this whole area. Thanks for Juanito. Hello. Hey, Howdy. Hey, Thanks for your time. No, I don't know why I'm plus one. I'm trying to blend in with the crowd today. Beautiful. Yeah, the crowd of three people. Where is Holly? How you doing? Yeah, where is? Holly, she's running for mayor. There's four of us? There are five of us? Yeah, Apollo, where is, where is Holly? She's running for mayor. Uh, I don't know. I don't, you know, I'm not sure. Maybe she didn't hear that this was happening. I could rep for Holly. Damn, she ain't even got a chair, though. I got the... She's, she thinks this is beneath her. Can I take, can I take this chair home with me? Fox, you, Fox, you cannot take the chair. It's private property. Ah. Man, do you have Holly's phone number? Can you call her up and tell her this is Kathleen? Hmm. I don't have her number. Damn. Anyone have Holly Capello's phone number? No. I think I have her number. doesn't come, I think she'll be fine with me repping her. That's fine. She's asleep. Damn. Bad time to take she a nap. She's better than you. Maybe she's just getting her, maybe she's just yeah. getting her beauty sleep. Oh, look at your, you like. I had to sit down for a second. Yeah, it was very slow. Is that number or no? Sorry, my freaking thing, man. I have my phone now, now, but not on my hand. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. Father Fox. I remember. What's happening? My brother, send say a prayer for us, please. We need it. We need it right now. Oh, there you go. Ask for some. We need a prayer. That's what I'm asking for. Yeah, I'll do that. Holy moly, give me the formula and fix this man. Oh, <laughs> I, I feel, I feel protected now. Hey, Freeman, you're not going to speak up during the debate, right? I would never speak over my candidate. Yeah, you're going to be completely <laughs> quiet and sit there like a golem, right? Unless, yeah, unless, spoken to, unless otherwise advised by his, um, sure. by his contractor. Sure. So right. true. So true. Where can I hire one of those? 
Hey, uh, Sherry, if we could keep the uh, the heckling to a minimum, hey, please. Thank you. I'll shoot you. <laughs> God damn it! You fucked Anyways, up the chair. Mr. Mr. Grant, I mean, is this your own private property or is this public property? This is actually public property. Well, um, I, I have it. I have a permit. It is reserved okay, for me. Okay. All right. So the well, private. I personally don't believe in permits. But I, 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 I understand. I understand. But the the holy private shit, that guy's bald. Owner has authorized me okay. to be here. Okay. So. Then. All right. All right. This. Okay. Perfect. That's all I need to know. Rob. I should be one. Can I buy this place? Uh, this is my this is city. city. You cannot buy it. Ah, uh, city quality, uh, unfortunately. Ah, uh, damn. You could get one of the, like, storefronts downstairs if you want. You can get, like, a portion of it. Hmm. Mm. Better. Is that through you or the Better Business Bureau? I think, I should just go I think it's through the Better day. Business Bureau. You're lucky yeah. I'm not running. Hey, it leads to that. Freeman, come here. We have to mm. spin the drain of luck. Hey, You're lucky I'm not running. Four, boss. All right, come on. Yeah, you come need on, hair to come run. Gimmel, come on, and our eyebrows. Ooh, hey. Yeah. Oh, hey. Hey. Yeah. Exactly. Hey. Let's make a Protestant Catholic. Here's a radar gun. No, I'm actually. No votes for anyone unless they remove Murphy. Yeah. Deal. Anyways, let's uh, let's no, pray to the Protestant God, Lord Jesus, our Savior Christ, please, Lord heaven above. If if I could hear you, I would answer your question. Yeah. I was thinking if we're just expanding up and Adam down here, we can probably work something. Oh, you think we can do that? Brady Wheeler is crooked. Yeah. Oh, that'd be sweet. So true. You think we could like smash out a burger shot? Uh, I'm sorry, man. I don't I don't know anything about that. I'll no, I don't think anything about that. Unfortunately, let's address how Brady Wheeler is a crooked crook. Like a franchise. Yeah, that'd be cool. Cause I got a shit ton of employees. You're just, you're just redeeming. You're just taking back equipment yeah. that's rightfully yours. That you paid. Arthur Hightower will fix this city. Hey, get the uh, construction course, worker course. off the stage. Of what course, I will. I will. There? I will call the police and that's order that. the construction that. worker. I thought that was an electrician. Uh, I sadly do not have any of the phone numbers of any active police officers. I'm sorry, Mr. Grant. Here, I'll look. I know a couple of cops. If that if that man doesn't get off the stage, I'm bum rushing it. Very close, but you must stand. Oh close. shit! I don't know any of these motherfuckers. Damn. No, I right. I, I, I I can't agree with this. Really like what if what if a crazed Oh wait, is it? Is there a new page in the fucking services? Hi Tower, you see that? Can they have like, the government? I wanna, ch I wanna get my fucking, what do you call it, uh, towing business in there. Yeah. Maybe make things a lot easier. I think towing is not the mechanics though, right? The mechanics do. No, literally no one does towing. Fat tire, fat tire has a towing truck, but they never use it, and no other place has it. I put really, in a... like Vanessa's, Vanessa's like car, oh, fucking the en the engine cranked on it, all oil was coming out, so we got fat tire to come over and. Yeah, no, it. they do sometimes, but it's like I'm talking like mine would be like it's not a mechanic, like strictly, like you call me to tell you to a mechanic shop, and I'd also get like a a contract with a PD, so when they impound vehicles, I would bring it to the impound, you know what I mean, instead of. Okay. Doing it the way they do. There it is. I got the vote for the man. Right, we're gonna be uh, starting in like five minutes. Uh, Who the fuck's this guy? The moderator is just around the corner. The second moderator, I believe. So he'll be. Want to give it about ten more minutes? Yeah, ten Not minutes. Five. Hey, it's my yeah, boys in sure. the back there. How we doing, gentlemen? How we doing? You have a really strong jawline. Thank you. Gentlemen. You have strong looking. Hey, hey, doctor. He's off the nice. stage. You could come in off the stage too. You know. Who? What are you talking about? That guy's a doctor. I'm running. What the fuck are you talking about? You're running for mayor, doctor? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Hey, mayor for the you people. Hey, Luther, you ain't winning nothing. Uh, well, doctor, I'm sorry, but I'm not. Wait, 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 I don't want hey, to. Hey, uh, shut the fuck stage. up or I'll shoot you. Okay, call the cops. <laughs> yeah, that's actually very funny. Shooting? That's fair. I was very fair, I... doctor. Very fair. Isn't this guy a lawyer? <laughs> Literally. Donuts. I was told that anybody could run. But this big nerd this wants true, to cry doctor. about it. You... Do not move. Oh god. This man is off the stage. You know, I'm not gonna run for mayor, I'm gonna strut for mayor. 
<laughs> what the fuck? In the world, one, two, come at a time. Babes. I think that we should. First thing I would do as mayor. Mayor. <coughs> Yeah. Well, that, yes, up, and then Papa and then everyone must eat a banana. What's up, big dog? Yeah, I second the motion. Yeah, mm -hmm. don't tread on me. Well, she got my vote. Fuck it. Right. I'm not trying hey, to bust a couple you. buttons on my shirt. Get the microphone, please. Hey, up and Adam is healthy food. Speak up, loser. I won't vote for you. Motherfucker, what? All right, now I can hear you. All right. Oh, me and Whoa. Father, we got the same shoes on. Yeah, they got the gator ski in. He already had my vote before I walked in. Oh, the cops are coming. Uh oh. Block is hot right now. Shit, that immigration here? <laughs> Vote for Father Fox, no more ice. <laughs> I hate winter too. Snow is horrible. Yeah, very dry. Yeah, that's why that's why he doesn't like ice. Because of winter. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Jesus. Oh shit, it's the fuzz. Sit down. What are we waiting for? I don't know. Are you just shut up? Group. What's wrong with the fancy pants? Oh, yeah. You're How you doing? Food? I don't know. Did anybody order the food? I wait as long as it takes if there's free food, eh? Yo, someone tell the electrician there's a light bulb out over here. Yeah, it's inside Michael's brain. Ooh. Get him. Get him. Yeah. I are there trucks? Uh, he's lighting the fuse, sorry. Don't worry, we'll catch it. Be on his time. I'm best dead. He is oh, best dead. <laughs> All oh, three wow. of you motherfuckers wore the yeah, the most tight, yeah, disgusting yeah. suits I've ever seen. Yeah. No way. Oh, Everyone else, else their balls yeah. are getting cracked. What is this? No, it's hair. Oh, yeah. I'm sick of this. You gonna you gonna complain about how time is while your ass is hanging out in those pants, Apollo? Care. Jesus. <laughs> you you're the only one who looks at a man's ass. Oh, I'm the only. Yeah, you're the right. only one. <laughs> What's a high tower? Being in prison, you know where the secrets is. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Where do you hide from? Homo say you say? No. I'm a hundred percent libertarian. His blood is yellow. His blood runs yellow. My blood Show runs up I don't even have I'd like blood. to inform everyone that my company has published a few articles. Um... They're in the bulletin board. For some reason, the newspaper stand is just closed, so it, I don't know. They'll end up there eventually, but, um, <coughs> you know, check them out. Whatever. We got to pay for those papers? No, they are free, and they will eventually be in your new in the newspaper stands, but right now, it's just the only way you can view them is on the bulletin board. Thank you. Uh, uh, they uh, are what's, free. Your, what's your company? Grant Entertainment. Grant Entertainment. Oh, you. Yep. That's you? Can, can, can I get Happy an article? Happy to announce uh, these articles were made possible by a grant from Hightower. Uh, legal fund. Uh, we're trying to make sure that reporters and Mr. public Hightower, defenders are present Mr. in the Hightower, city. Mr. Hightower, are you now saying that you bribed Mr. Uh, Grant's company into it? No, no. He I owns the media. media. I make it the very clear to. The is apolitical and has not endorsed any singular candidate. Oh, take it easy, I made it very clear to every public defender I've hired and every reporter that I have no actual say over whatever they publish. Which, if if you read the article, is yeah, why there's a brief description right, about me to be too. being a rat. Apparently, I have no idea why but yeah i've heard that i've heard that from other corrupt politicians come and throw a block Thank of you. cheese at him for being a rat <laughs> no. 
Hi, Cal did cocaine with me at Fat Tire. Tom, you better go get Jerry. That's a fact. I already smoked some meth. Yep. I got pictures too. I'm High Tower's Stop weed dealer. I got pictures of the girl looking for her earring and his pants around his ankles. <laughs> what a we are starting come out. very soon, very soon, people. You said that 20 minutes ago. Uh, it was not 20 minutes ago. Holy <laughs> shit, it's Colonel Sanders. Where's there, Colonel Sanders? We need a fucking wing down here. Chicken. Right there. We need, a, we need a wing down here. Oh. Down here. I'd like to I'd like to in, like to give a thank you to all my uh, libertarian supporters out there in the crowd. Thank yeah, you very much for coming, whoa. and I'm glad that I could. I'm glad I could. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to read a book. I love you. That's your own natural right to learn how to read or not. Make That's a uh, God-given right. Make weed legal. We will be making. We will be looking into the recreational use of marijuana, making it legal yeah. and medicinal purposes. Hey, speak up. Legalize heroin. We got an illegal man walk. You think yeah, if you yeah. fail, you'll fail at life. Alright, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can, I can tell you this. How's it going? How's it going? Yeah. Who's that? Two minutes. We'll be starting in two minutes. I said that two minutes ago. Make sure everybody's yelling when they're talking. I can't hear back here. Can we plug the microphone in? Crazy, right? I guess people caught me talking. Uh, you know what? Yeah, we're going to do some sound checks. Uh, Father Fox, could you please shout as loud as you can and go ahead and speak? You don't want that. Yeah, can you hear me, motherfuckers? Father okay, Fox. Ha! Everyone here. Hear Everyone me, hear me, hear me, hear me. If you cannot hear, I suggest you make your way towards the <laughs> second row, maybe in the middle. Yeah. All right, what about me? Everyone in my beautiful... Yes, we all good? Okay, everyone right, can hear right. the moderators. Fantastic. Uh, hi, Tower. Go ahead and speak. Hello. Hello. Goodbye. All right. Fantastic. Uh, Delino. Marco. Paulo. Ah, okay. motherfucker. And me lastly, too. Mr. Ziggler. Hello, everyone. It is I, Mr. Ziggler. We can't hear you on the left side over here. Party. How do you do? Woo! What if they walk Woo! closer to the wow. yeah. This motherfucker's wall. He's pretty upbeat. Jesus. All right. I'm sorry that my advisor and uh, my, my second right-hand man, my best friend, Michael Snow, cannot be here today with me. He's currently incarcerated. Criminal. What are you guys doing? <laughs> Your best friend's with a felon. <laughs> All right. All right, we're hiring a felon. He will be voting for me inside. He will be voting for me inside the uh, Brolingbrook Penitentiary. We are going to get a mail-in ballot to him. Okay, okay. <laughs> He's not a felon. He, he was rightfully, he was unrightfully uh, charged for for urinating in a in a public space. And possibly, and possibly. No, he he is not a sex offender. He is not a sex offender. At least he at least he didn't pee his pants. That's all that matters. Who's pissing their pants? Get them in a diaper. I believe. I believe he did pee his pants. Though. I do believe. I'm not <laughs> that sure. Dude, that dude's okay, crazy. You're, you're kind of losing my flow now. It's not me. It's my. Uh, All right. It's my second right hand. Man. All right, we're gonna be starting. Uh, everyone, please be quiet. Fantastic. All right. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody here to the first mayoral debate hosted by Grant Entertainment. Uh, I am Apollo Grant, and beside me here is Mr. Mike uh, Goshanovitz. Uh, he's gonna be referred to as McFlash. We are the moderators. Okay. Fuck yeah, baby. Uh, I'd like to lay out some ground rules for these debates here. Firstly, if we could please ask the audience, I know it's very tempted to shout and heckle and all that. Please keep that to a minimum. You know, I don't mind if you gasp when somebody says something horrendous on the stage or whatever, but uh, that's all very fun. But please, no, no fucking conversations with the candidates. You will be asked to leave. Uh, secondly, uh, there will be an opportunity for... Uh, the audience to ask candidates questions at the end, so please save your remarks until then. <coughs> uh, Sanders, just clap whenever I say anything. Yeah, that works. <coughs> now, uh, candidates, we ask you treat each other with respect and keep the time requirements in mind and uh, respect each other's times as well, okay? So if you feel you need to speak, just raise your hands. It's something. Throw, throw your hands in the air. Throw one hand in the air. I don't care. 
um, and we will probably get to you, the moderator, okay? Uh, if if the candidates mention, like if they're making a point and they specifically mention you, you will be given an opportunity to rebuttal, and there will be open discussion type, uh, you know, arrangement. So, but <clears throat> without further ado, I guess we'll get started. So first off, we're going to get all of the candidates to introduce themselves. Um, you're going to have two minutes and give me one moment, but we're going to be starting with Father Fox. Father Fox, you may begin. <clears throat> I'm Father Fox. I'm running as a libertarian, but I'm not backed by the libertarian party because I don't believe them to represent the libertarian party correctly because it's just a whole bunch of cops for some weird reason. And so I'm run running as a true libertarian, trying to bring gun rights and all that stuff back to civilians. Very That's nice. it. Very nice. Okay, thank you for keeping it brief, Mr. Fox. We're going to move on here to Mr. Hightower. Hello, my name is Arthur Hightower. I own Hightower Realty, and I'm running under the Democratic ticket. Uh, I have been on the city council for quite a while now, uh, through Mayor Schumer's sort of uh, reign, and I think out of all the candidates on here, I'm the only person that has actual political experience in Los Santos. Uh, I've met basically nearly everybody in this room. I've probably sold something to nearly everyone in this room. Uh, I'm a man of good standing, and I am a bit of a philanthropist. I do like to provide aid and money to the people to try and make sure that the city is working and that the public services in the city are strong and robust. Mm. I see the rest of my time. Okay. Uh, Mr. Delino, you're two minutes. Hello, fellow citizens of Los Santos. I am your Republican candidate, John Delino. In the past, I have held many jobs, most importantly being the role as mayor of Vice City, which I held along with my deputy mayor, Dennis Johnson, from 1968 to 1970. With this role came a thorough understanding of the trials and tribulations that a city may go through, especially in times of need, and how they should be properly handled. Along with this, I also learned the importance of listening to your fellow citizens about issues that have and continue to affect their well-being. If elected as mayor of Los Santos, I promise to create the means necessary for the fine people of this city to express their wishes in order to keep this community strong. Thank you. Okay, and lastly, Mr. Ziegler. Hi, everyone. My name's Daniel Ziegler. I'm... A staunch Repu or, uh, libertarian. I'm being fully backed by the Libertarian Party here. Um, there's not really too much I could say. I don't have a lot of fancy uh, degrees or anything. I'm I'm not too much of a, a politician like these other guys are. But I'm a hard I'm a man of hard work and honesty. My motto is a man of the people, a man for the people. I used to own a small car dealership, a small car dealership back in Philadelphia. I. I like I said, I'm not too, uh, I'm not too traversed in, uh, an education, wait, no, college or anything. Like I said, I'm just an honest working guy. I just want to see, you know, the people's rights are backed and make sure you guys aren't getting fucked over by the government. That's it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ziegler. All right. <clears throat> so the first question here, real hot button topic, um... Basically, Ooh. every candidate that uh, my company has spoken to has mentioned real estate and their plans for it. Um, so what specifically is your plan as uh, if you were to be elected mayor? We're going to start with Mr. Ziegler and go in reverse order this time. Okay. Well, as we all know, the real estate industry is constantly evolving, and we need to keep up with the time. We must embrace new technologies and innovate ideas to ensure that we remain ahead of the curve. I'm committed to investing in the latest tools and resources that will help our agency grow and thrive. I believe that our success lies in the strength of our team, really. We need to empower our agents and, and staff with the knowledge and skills they need to excel in their roles, really. This means, uh, you know, providing training and development opportunities to uh, real estate agents. And, uh, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Delino, go ahead. Well, currently, I believe real estate is pretty much inaccessible to the working man of Los Santos due to uh, high prices and lack of agents around the city. I believe that the real estate agency and its policy should be reformed 
to allow for future ex future accessibility to the citizens that wish to own property within the greater area of Los Santos. Okay, Mr. Delino. Uh, next year is uh, Mr. Hightower. Yep, go ahead. Well, uh, I guess I'm biased in saying this, but as the manager of the real estate company, I think it's done very well in the uh, months that I've been working there and managing it. Uh, we have sold nearly 250 properties as of this moment. 50% of those properties were sold by myself, 30% sold by Vanessa Banks sitting in the front row here. Uh, we are available pretty much 24-7. We're very hard workers. People can reach out to us in many ways. It's just that people don't always get the full story. There's a lot of whisper campaigns and misinformation that goes around. For example, um, if you wouldn't mind, could I ask uh, Mr. Lino, uh, how much does an apartment in Vinewood cost? Could you, t could you hazard a guess? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, I haven't been contacted. And I haven't, Mr. Fox, uh, what about you? How much do you think a apartment in the South Side costs? Shit, sure, you talking about like this, the public housing ones, the fifty dollars ones? No, no, I'm talking about like an apartment that you could buy from the real company. What does an apartment in the South Side cost? Shit, sure, I don't know. I ain't a realtor. Probably too much. <laughs> it costs three thousand five dollars. That's that's even the Dang. slightly more premium one. There's one that's cheaper for two thousand five hundred. The only cars available in PDM, that there's like 18% of the cars available in PDM are slightly cheaper than men. Uh, these are these are good prices. It's just people want to live in mansions and want to pay five grand for the pleasure. Uh, it's a lot of people who think that they deserve more for less and want me to cheat local homeowners out of their property for them. And I, I can't. I can't do that in good conscience. And I won't do that. Uh, I see my time. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Father Fox. Uh, you're gonna be uh, taking uh, this one now. Uh, I think it's wild for paying three grand for an apartment. I'm probably gonna get shot standing in front of. I think that should lower the price at least a little bit. <laughs> if I'm gonna get shot, it should at least be like 500 bucks, 100 bucks, some shit, or even like the trailers. Like my trailer trailers that I've invested into four grand for like something that looks like a homeless man lives inside of it. A bit overpriced. I understand, like, if you want to live up in the hills, yeah, that's going to be pricey. But, like, Southside and our, you know, less fortunate people, you know, just starting out, saving up three grand. You know how <clears throat> you know many trash, trash runs that is? You know what I mean? Just the, how much, you know, the middle class makes versus how much, you know, a house is. Or even a financing, you know, policy would be nice. So people don't have to save up, you know, five grand into one thing, you know what I mean? I do agree with this statement. Yeah. That's all I gotta say. Alright, uh, Hightower, if you'd like 30... Know. Yeah, go ahead, Hightower. Very uh, brief, we've please. asked about uh, financing in the past, and we've been told no, because of the way that PDM's cars are treated when they're repossessed, they come back with axles and wheels falling off. It, it's... I mean, I would like to help, uh, but again, if... You can't make three thousand five hundred. Then it isn't the realty company that's the problem. I think it's the city. I mean, better businesses, better jobs, more pay is what is needed. Uh, attempts to sort of re-legislate the realty company. Uh, attempts that have happened before and have been defeated by the city council once they've been made aware of the limitations of the company and what I do. Can I rebuttal that? Um, very brief, please, Mr. I need Park. like ten seconds. Yeah. All I want to say is, could we at least, like, maybe find another, like, have another realtor company? So at least there's some type of diversity to it, other than you and Vanessa just making up prices, you know? Do you mind if I answer that? Yeah, I, I'm going to answer this. I think it is a city problem. I mean, you can criticize Mr. Hightower's company, but there is, a, oh, yeah, from my I know understanding, that. a large amount of the, the city that has the burden there so yeah, what if i what if i sell someone a property and some other group of people go to the other realty company and they find out and they go and rip up the deed to that place and take the keys away and everything inside of it stolen and gone what, what do we do in that situation oh That's... so so what you're saying is the other realtors would have the same yes yeah, yeah okay. it would be very dangerous to people's personal property unfortunately okay i feel you all right, uh, wrap that up now. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna ask some uh, some of the candidates some specific questions. 
firstly, uh, Mr. Delino, um, so you voice your support for the Crown Jewel Motel. Would you like to talk about the Crown Jewel Motel at all, or anything about it? No. Uh, I mean, I'd like to say that uh, I believe that it's doing a lot of good for the community. I mean, obviously, uh, like I said, I'd like affordable housing, and it uh, it gives people the opportunity to own something other than uh, just a crappy motel room that they pay fifty dollars a night for. It allows people to have keys to you know their own place. I think that's a great thing for the community. All right, thank you, thank you, Mr. Delino. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Uh, McFlash, if you'd like to ask a question. Yeah, sure. Uh, Mr. Delino, as you were a mayor in Vice City, what were some of the major changes you made within the city? A lot of the major changes I made were actually within the police department. Uh, as you might imagine, down there, there's a lot of uh, ne'er-do-wells, uh, especially within the police department. And uh, I, laid up, I made a lot of changes to that police department that really benefited the community. As uh, you could probably ask a lot of people around there. Okay. Other changes? Could you name them? Uh, most importantly, we changed the chief of police who was uh, thrown in jail for uh, different accounts that I shouldn't get into. It would take very, very long. Uh, another question for you would be uh, as you were arrested, uh, you might want to repeat that, Mr. McFlash. Rebuttal for Mr. Delino. Oh, go go ahead, Mr. Ziegler. Go ahead. You say that you threw the former chief of police into prison for accounts of things for a, a high amount accounts of things. Yes. Is that not, not something that anybody should do? I mean, if there's a how is that reforming the police? Yeah. Yeah. How is that reform? How is that a policy that you introduced to reform the police? Well, that was part of the reason why it came out. A lot of people, obviously, citizens sometimes, they don't hear about these things. A lot of times, it has to do with people within the community that uh, aren't great for the community that know about it. Sometimes citizens so, just don't hear about this. So, I was so would not a better policy be more transparency within the community with the government? Well, that was, that was what it created. I mean, this was... Whoa. Well, I brought this to life. I've actually introduced a real policy to the council of the city, the uh, Community Trust Act, which creates a civilian board that is able to access complaints against police officers, the, uh, the firefighters, the Department of Justice, and the hospital. And these uh, individuals Mr. can tell people if they find the punishments that were performed were, you know, satisfactory or not. So, so people can you actually feel comfortable, you know, knowing their complaints moment, have been recorded. And knowing how they've been sort of handled, uh, is not the is not the uh, the mayor that you work for not the same mayor that's one of the most disliked mayors in the entire city's history of politics and government. Yeah, I mean, it's the sort of short history you're talking about right there, and I. But it is. A I mean, I personally have my own qualms about Mayor Schumer. That's correct, but I mean, the best things he ever did was take his hands off of the wheels of power and let his city council do most of the heavy lifting. Yep, we're, we're actually going to open that up to uh, to all of the candidates, starting with Michael Fox. What what is uh, what is your thoughts on the previous administration, and what would you change had you been the mayor? Uh, first off, I probably wouldn't have been a communist. That's probably where I would have started. I wouldn't have raised tried to raise taxes on small businesses. Try uh, what I got from him. He was just trying to destroy small businesses. I heard rumors of some places he wanted three thousand dollars a week in taxes. Which is pretty insane. I would have tried to give more tax breaks to people and try to help fund smaller businesses and bring, you know, a sense of community back to the city and actually, you know, help people with their stuff instead of trying to, you know, take away. That's it. All right, Mr. Hightower. Uh, Walter's problem was that he wasn't very courageous. Uh, the entire tax debacle occurred because John Belugi sort of forced that on him, told him, taxes, 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 do that now. And we all know how that man sort of died in that plane crash involved in that Ponzi scheme, right? Uh, Yui Nakamura, deputy mayor, was able to talk him out of it, uh, and the city council was able to sort of shape his term in terms of the actual good change that's happened in the city. Uh, things like the 
the garbage sort of the garbage man thing that he put out that we didn't even know about that until he had actually done it but when the city council sat down and talked things out and worked out what we wanted to do and where we wanted to go uh he very effectively didn't voice his opinion he didn't vote he sat there and let the people work for the people now if the mayor actually has you know good ideas and a backbone and is able to uh, yeah, stand seconds. up for the people then i can see that being a much more effective combination between the mayor the city council and whatever else happens all right thank, thank you mr high tower uh mr De <coughs> excuse me mr delano go ahead yeah you know i believe his uh his cabinet was it was a very strong one but uh as Mr. Fox said, some of his policies, such as the uh, business tax that he wanted to enact, were pretty threatening to uh, all of the small businesses of Los Santos. And uh, I just, I, I don't agree with many of his policies that uh, he tried to enact. This shit funny as hell. He seemed like a very strong uh, mayor. I guess I'll leave it at that. Okay, and lastly, Mr. Ziegler. I'm sure this will be interesting. Yeah. I was uh, I was here for the Walter um, Canada. I was here for everything. What I didn't like, I'm gonna top out, or I'm gonna basically what Fox said. You know, a lot of high taxes on small businesses. I'm a firm believer in small businesses. I love the idea of them, and personally, I think more businesses should be in the city. I uh, I think the taxes should be reduced. One of my plans are cutting taxes down 65% in the city. I, uh, I also don't believe that Mr. Schumer was a very strong man. He didn't have a backbone, and he was also very old. He was he was an old guy, he had gray hair. And, uh, I'm actually I'm 27, and I believe that you know your leader should be a young, uh, strong guy that has a voice, a voice that can be heard, a strong voice. May I? Uh... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. McClellan. Uh, Mr. Ziegler, are you saying you have an issue with the elderly? No, I'm not saying I have an issue with the elderly really at all. I just feel like some of the policies he kind of couldn't be around to actually go through with. Because of his age. <laughs> not really, no. May I ask so why would you mention to... his age? Because I was just simply stating that I believe that it would be oh. better for a younger person <laughs> to be involved. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, one, 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 this, one brief, please. one brief, please, Mr. Hightower, yeah, it's, go ahead. It's wonderful that all these gentlemen have these opinions now. I would have loved to actually see them in the council. I would have loved to, it was open for anyone to come. It was open for anyone to talk about laws they wanted to repeal or any ideas that they had to put forward themselves. Uh, I was the only one on the stage who was there, unfortunately. As far as I know, none of these gentlemen presented themselves to the city council and presented their ideas, making the city a better place until... The race began. Can I rebuttal that? Uh, very briefly, Mr. Fox, go ahead. I tried to talk to the mayor, and he called me a dirty felon and told me to go away. And when I did try typical to, Schumer, when Schumer. I tried to do that, I was I was pushed away and said I'm a felon. Und he doesn't understandable. care. Understandable. I I do understand I, that. that I, I agree. Schumer, that probably happened. Yeah, that's uh, all. Okay. I believe I heard that he, uh, not to chime in too much, but I heard that he tried to implement a uh, a law that would not allow felons to vote but we yes, don't need to talk was, about that yeah he was gonna he was gonna introduce a law that made felons unable to vote in the state which uh, as a believer in universal suffrage i thought that would obviously be incredibly incorrect he introduced it and then died the week after which i suppose right. in its own way is kind of a blessing uh, because right. i mean stripping people of this of this great city of their ability to vote on on anything and everything it just seems cruel and unusual personally all right, we're gonna we're gonna move on to a question for all the candidates, starting with Mr. Ziegler now. Um, <clears throat> one of the most important policies to voters is, in fact, police reform. So, uh, what do you think about the police department, and how would you tackle the problems within the department, Mr. Ziegler? Go ahead. Fire well, monkey. Uh, I've heard a lot of complaints about some unlawful search and seizures that have been going on, and I've Fire also monkey. heard a lot of complaints Fire of Fire officers Fire. not uh, following the guidelines of the Constitution, which is a big no-no for me. You know, all these people are just out there trying to make a living. The world's already hard enough as it is with all these taxes, and, you know, the government breathing down their breath, down their throat. I mean, it's... The last thing we need is a totalitarian 
uh, police force going around and harassing all these people. I see. I think the police should do their job, and that's it. They they don't need all this fancy equipment. They don't need tanks. They don't need all these high powered guns. What do guns and tanks do? They kill people. Yeah, I think. I just think that the police need to do their job, and that's it. I thought this guy was a libertarian. No more stop and searches. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Delino. I believe we need to hold certain officers accountable for destruction of the community. Uh, we have a lot of officers that are very capable uh, in the police department and the sheriff department, respectively. Uh, yet officers such as Donald Murphy, who have multiple complaints and cases mounting against them, have threatened people's jobs and even lives because of false claims <coughs> of destruction of justice and breach of peace. While in office, I would like to speak to fine officers that find it in the best interest to do the job correctly in order to get some answers as to why people like this are still in the police department. Rest in peace, rats. All right, Mr. Hightower, you have a minute and a half. I mean, I'm already doing this. Uh, I've already introduced the Community Trust Act, which is hopefully going to make sure that IA is actually following complaints up uh, and issuing punishments. Just the sheer pressure that the public may know that officers who repeatedly run afoul of the public aren't facing punishment should be enough to, you know, reform internally. Uh, externally, as you know, I'm sort of the Hightower legal branch where I'm hiring on defense attorneys. Uh, unfortunately, the city was bereft of them for a little while and police were, I'm going to say, getting away with far too much. Uh, so far, I believe five defense lawyers have been hired on and are performing very admirably to protect the people from violations of their rights uh, and from police overreach. Uh, and the next step, obviously, is reporters. I want news to be strong in the city. I want people to know what's going on. If the police are doing what people say they're doing, then there should be hard evidence written down for people to see and people to consult. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Hightower. We're gonna we're gonna move on to some more candidate-specific questions. Just give me one moment, please. Damn, I'll get to answer that one. I'm so sorry. No, that is completely my fault. Fox, it, is your, it is your turn. I'm very sorry. So I'd have to say my my uh, relationship with PD has been pretty interesting. Yeah, you know, as most people know, I'm business partners with one of the high uh, higher ups in it. But I've also fell victim to police uh, brutality. You know, I've been handcuffed in a in a cell and stabbed. You know, by a former officer, Mark Leonard, multiple times, and you know, I've been, I've been shot when I was unarmed just for doing some simple painting at the PD. You know, just trying to spruce the place up and shot for no reason. So I've definitely had my fair share of police brutality done to myself, and I don't think they're all bad. You know, I'm definitely willing to work with them, and obviously you get bad apples here and there, and all that type of stuff. But I definitely need it. I think they need to be looked at a little tighter. And maybe not have you know rookies and you know just the, just a just a week ago I got into a boxing match with one of the new officers. So, really? consensually or like, uh, I said something to him and then he said, "Watch your mouth." Hit me with his baton. So then I punched him in the face, and then the and then the two they actually was their first day first first day as officers and we threw down in front of up and at him. He said, "I'm a cop. I can do what I want." All right. Fired. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Fox. Like I said, we are going to be moving on to candidate-specific questions. I'll begin. Uh, Mr. Hightower, um, you are, in fact, British. How do you respond to these allegations? Uh, if I was <laughs> so British, I'd be back in Britain. When I escaped to this great country, I love it. I have dual citizenship. I served in Vice City as a psychiatrist. Uh, what I, the uh, fuck? <laughs> you medicine. are British. <laughs> uh, America is beautiful. I love the promise on it. That would be nice. Is it my turn? It, it is. That's why All right. Uh, this is a very in intellectual question, so try to follow me here, Mr. Hightower. But anyways, uh, I would like to know, is that tight-ass suit, uh, you know, issue standard in Britain or what? Uh, no, I bought it here in Los Angeles. I like to support local businesses. I like to, you know, go out and like to dress well. So I, uh, you know, get it tailored here. Thank you. Very nice, very nice.
<clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, ask some more, can I answer some questions now? One moment. Okay, uh, each of the candidates, I'm gonna, we're gonna start again with, uh, Father Fox here. Um, if elected mayor, um, would you elect any of the other candidates you see on the stage here onto your city council and follow up, uh, who would be your deputy mayor? Uh, Father Fox, go ahead. Uh, I'd, I'd say as deputy mayor, the fine man in the all white suit right there, I think me and him, you know, we've talked before this and I think we've agreed on a lot of things. So I think he'd be good. And city councils, I'd have to go around and meet more people and I'd kind of just leave it open to the, you know, whoever wants to come apply. I'd like to broaden it a little more, a different, you know, more diverse people, not the same people who've been around doing things and keeping the city, you know, the way it is. Like Hightower's been on it for how long and, you know, same people making things how they want to be. I think we need to change, you know, change of pace, and that's all. All right, Mr. Hightower, go ahead. <clears throat> I unfortunately don't have a deputy mayor yet. Uh, I'm looking. I'm hoping to actually get a woman in the position. I think that uh, the uh, previous uh, mayor, I mean, Schumer in his first sort of term had Sherry Summers, and in the second had Yui Nakamura, both of them performed very admirably and actually worked very well for the city. Uh, in terms of city councilmen, I'm actually looking to uh, cut the city council down slightly uh, and introduce a new program uh, of warding the city. Uh, as, you know, Grady Wheeler is the commissioner of Davis City. I would like to see more of that. I like to see people taking prominent roles in their areas. I like to see someone being the face of Vespucci, being able to take their, the people's problems there and produce it and take them to city council so that we can actually solve those issues. Uh, I like to see about, I think, five to six wards introduced, uh, including uh, the country, sort of Vespucci, uh, downtown, uh, and the east side, alongside Davis. I have a, I have a please, rebuttal for Mr. Hightower. One, one moment, please. Well, Mr. Ziegler, you will, you will have your two minutes. Uh, Hightower, if you have anything else to say, please say it. No, that's it. Thank you. All right, Mr. Delino, it is uh, your turn now. Go to the wall. I believe that uh, all of these candidates up here are very important to all of us, obviously, to be able to make this stage they have had to have done something right, uh, especially Mr. Hightower in the council. I believe that he has done a very good job previously. I think he would be a great fit there in the future. Uh, I'm still looking for candidates for my deputy mayor. Not dick to pick me! That, uh, Father Fox would uh, allow me to become his, uh, and he may come into question in terms of my... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking around for candidates, but about it for now. Okay, thank you, Mr. Delano. Lastly, uh, Mr. Ziegler, you have a minute and a half. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just want to top on uh, Ed Tower's question. Or, sorry, he said that he wants to have wards of certain areas. Um, who would appoint these wards? It wouldn't be you, of course, right? No, it would be by city council. Okay, and who would all be on city democratically? Council? Well, okay, I, I still have to. I still have to make those choices. Obviously, moving forward, well, uh, I haven't like solidified is... anything in stone yet because I am open to the public and want to find people who fit those positions. Yes, yes, of course. That's exactly what it sounds like. What it sounds like to me is that it's some sort of like uh, division across the state, kind of like how Berlin is. Whoa! Wow. Dang! But anyways, um, what was the question? Ziggler, Ziggler, that shit. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Who would you have as a deputy mayor, Mrs. Ziegler? You have, like, 40 seconds. My deputy mayor would either be the chairman, Kermit Constantine, or, um, if we're talking about who's up here on the candidate, say? probably Father Fox. Yeah. Hey, that put the okay. Okay. immigration. Or Clarence Fuck all that. So you accuse you me of building the, the Berlin Wall and your entire uh, body is made up of police officers. Is that what you're saying, Ziegler? Uh, Father yeah, Fox is not a police delay. officer. Mm-hmm. Well, he mentioned that the Libertarian Party isn't really uh, supporting him, even though he's running as a Libertarian. The Libertarian Party is majority police officers, correct? You have an answer? 
Mr. Mr. Ziggler. Damn, I got a lot of guys. Who makes up the most people Don't in your people. party? I'm sorry, Ziggler. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It was in my head for a second. What, what was that? Who makes up the most people in your party? Um, what would you say the biggest demographic is? What's the What's the thing that makes them all you know have in common? I would say our police officers. Okay, thank you. We're all law abiding citizens, and I think that's all that really matters. No, all I agree. So he's saying we're not all law abiding citizens. So, so are you saying law abiding citizens don't matter? We've done investigations into these police officers. None of them have any IA reports open. Is that what you're saying, Mr. Ziegler? No, I'm saying, are you, do you not care about the people who break the law? Felons, no. yeah, got away. Why don't they have it? Do you not want to help them get on the, the, the path? How do you Wait, feel about reform? Like what are your plans for that? Reform. Yeah. Yeah. Reforms are reforms for like non-violent criminals. Most of them are. So, I, uh, I, violent criminals aren't viable for reform. Violent criminals aren't viable for reform. I do believe they are. I mean, after a certain honor of time period, of course. I mean, I used to be a violent criminal. <laughs> okay, what, what exactly would that please, time please, period be, Please, keep it to a minimum, audience, please. Uh, between 10 to 20 days. And why have you decided that time frame exactly? It just seems like a viable time. We don't want to wait too long because if somebody was unrightfully arrested, then that's just bullshit. I see. Very good. Man of people. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, again, we're going to move on to some individual questions here. Uh, Mr. Hightower, we'll start with you. Uh, you've expressed a desire to increase uh, city spending. How would you recommend doing so, and where would the revenue uh, required come from? Uh, one of the things I really want to do is uh, codify unions, city unions. I want to make the garbage job have an actual like city union that may have a board. I want to do the same thing for farmers, and I want to do the same thing for various other jobs in the city, like taxi drivers. Uh, I want those unions to, you know, make sure that people who put in the hard work are getting rewarded financially. Uh, one of the things I really want to do is open a uh, state-sponsored uh, sort of food bank, uh, something that would uh, pay farmers for the work they do uh, if they bring produce in, and then supply that produce uh, usually sort of uh, with the understanding that you pay back loans sort of i suppose for new businesses new restaurants that open up new bars that open up so they don't have to scramble those first few weeks to get the supplies they need okay if uh is that is that all yes that'll be all okay thank you very much mcflash if you'd like to ask a question uh yeah i mean uh let me think i mean i i'm st i'm kind of stuck on this berlin wall thing will that be for pur purchase or what is that something i could buy or uh, no there will be wall. no berlin wall now no i am wall. just trying to increase the representation the wall, that man. people in the city have they've been playing about it i'm trying to find a solution to it uh, i don't want to separate these wards away from each other i just want to reward the communities that have already been built in them the people that already live there Sounds as like far as, uh, well, getting back to what you were saying with the unions, how do you plan to regulate it and make sure they're treating their, uh, you know, workers fairly? Uh, generally speaking, if there are public union heads, if there is someone that you can say is in charge of the taxi union, then that person is way more accountable than the current situation of sort of a more free-for-all or unions that exist but aren't really recognized until it's too late. Uh, I really want to sort of make sure that these people are getting their voices heard, that their needs are being addressed, and the best way of doing that is, you know, having a face, having someone represent them, having someone who's actually able mm. to uh, show that they're really doing the job. Okay. Mm, excuse me. Okay. Thank you very much. You better fucking you, hit me. You're fine. You're fine. I was just. Yeah. Uh, question of Mr. Hightower. Uh, sure. yeah, go they ahead, Mr. Do you uh, happen to know about the sanitation and taxi union head that is currently in the crowd, Mr. Santino Fontana? I unfortunately don't. I've never actually met the man because uh, we've never really had him in the city council. We've never really... I don't know. It, I've never been down to one of his meetings. I haven't seen when they've been opened recently. That's, that's the thing that I want to address. I want to make sure that people have access to this public information. That newcomers to the city can know there is a sanitation and taxi union and be able to approach... 
brand or members of it and get licensed or, or join the union. Uh, did you know that they had a meeting this week? I did not. Like I said, we have no public information about that. So the city council wasn't involved with it, and that's something that I want to change. That's something I want to make better. All right, let's wrap it up, gentlemen. I, well, I just want to say that I would like to have these union heads obviously have a seat in the council uh, if I were elected, just to have this all this stuff more clear about the unions, just to make sure the meetings are uh, being just, just we need people down there. We need uh, workers, we need people in heads of state down there to see what's going on. I think it would be a great thing for that. All right, thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Delino. We're gonna we're gonna ask Father Fox a question now. Father Fox, um, based on some of your previous advertisements, it's clear that you are uh, almost illiterate. Um, if elected mayor, would you hire somebody to write official city memos and announcements, or would you uh, continue to embarrass yourself? Yeah, man. <laughs> this is sort of. I don't a bad know how one. that. Apollo. I don't know Apollo, how that got there. One. Oh my god! I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, I, that one got past the secretary. Cruel. I'm gonna work on that. That's a oh, fucked Jesus. up question, eh? That's fucked up. But now I'm just gonna keep slanging words in my mouth. Okay, well, I'm very, I'm very. I apologize for that, Mr. Fox. I apologize. That's my fault. I printed but, them out. That got past me. Yeah, the but the fuck but, has a blower inside the building. Get the fuck out of here, eh? Oh God. Oh, oh, good. Can you can you not be here? Can you, can you fucking leave? Oh my God. <laughs> what the fuck's that? Okay, I've got Let's a question. Push. On account of okay. those two, right. there, how do you fellas Leave feel about heart. instating the death? Uh, hey, get the is over there. there. There is a death penalty in the state. Unfortunately, I don't know if there's an actual execution room yet. I mean, to my God. understanding of the law, uh, what I was told... I was thinking about maybe, uh... Blower. Please, God. Jesus Christ. Hello! Oh, Hi, Miss Elder. I'm Miss so Elder. sorry, I'm Miss late. Elder, please. Uh, Miss Elder, please. Oh, get her! Get her! I'm get the get fuck out of here! Mary! Um, hello? Who are you? Get off the stage! Miss mm. Elder, please, the debate, the debate has already please started, Miss Elder. Please, please, please. Are you serious? Oh, fuck you, people! Fuck you! Whatever, you ugly, fat pieces of shit, anyway! Fuck the city! Get this fucking whore out of here! It was me, bitch! What the fuck are you gonna do about it? She's got a gun! Shoot her! Shoot her! She's reaching! She's reaching! Don't shoot her! Don't shoot her! Come on! Shoot her in the face! This has been your lovely MRPD and sheriff's office supporting you guys in your right to vote. Okay, God bless America. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Thank you. Can I can I go back to the death penalty question? <clears throat> I, everyone, I'm sorry about the interruption. Like, if we could please get back to the scheduled debate, I'd, I'd appreciate it. Oh my god. <clears throat> like I was saying, death penalty. How, how yes. are we on that? Uh, from my experience with it, I was told by uh, Juan when he was a DA that when I got my second strike, uh, if I was arrested one more time, I'd be given life in prison. And then if I were to escape or rack up any more charges, he would uh, put me put me on death row. So, to my understanding, it's still in the city. <laughs> and I think it's unfair. I believe with the prison reform recently, there are currently death row inmates uh, yeah. awaiting execution. Uh, Father Fox, as you have a very strong stance on prison reform, what would be some things you would like to add into our prison systems to help with that? I'd like to actually add like programs and other things for prisoners to do. Cause, you know, I've been in prison, I think, I believe 19 times. And there's really no, no programs nor anything to help you get back on your feet. Cause you know when you go in there, they find you know the absolute shit out of you. So you you go out, you're losing about two or three thousand, you know, yeah. due to fines. And then they're seizing any money in your pockets. So you know they're kind of just kicking you while you're down, taking all your stuff off you, you know, all types of things. So it'd be nice to actually have job programs and things for people to do in there, save up some actual physical cash, so they at least have some type of release fund, and also you know have programs for them to you know counseling and things like that. And you know, I think uh, Rats actually introduced a bill to the city council about that, which was passed. It's just Schumer 
uh, you couldn't do anything with it, unfortunately. We need yeah, some Rance, paper and pencils too to write our highness. That's very shit, successfully right? sort of got that passed in the city council, actually. <clears throat> All right, thank, thank you very much. Any any other candidates have anything to say about the death penalty? Okay, moving on. Free Chico. Uh, Father Fox, uh, you are a candidate, uh, the candidate, maybe most connected to the average citizen. Um, is there any issue that you think the average citizen faces that maybe the other the candidates, the other candidates on stage may not be aware of? I'd say one of the biggest issues are Terry stops. You know, I think it's pretty uh, outrageous that police can just stop you, pull you over, drag you out the car, search through all your shit, then kick you to the curb. Like the raza, just because, you know, you look like someone or you <clears throat> they think that you're someone else or that you, you know, they like for me, example, when I used to be a convicted felon, they used to just randomly stop me and see what I had on me in my car, you know, just for no reason. Like I could just be walking down the street, you know, harass me, harassing the, you know, it seems like that's what most cops like to do is just drive around south side harassing whoever just seems to be walking about. So I think that's one of the, you know, biggest issues I've heard from people. Also, the you know affordable housing like i know we already talked about that but that seems to be a very huge problem with people they just seem to can't you know between trying to have a car and you know you know but having some type of money for food plus housing it's a little ridiculous how much things are costing i think those are the two main key problems in the city all right thank you father Fox. <coughs> okay uh let me flash you have anything to add yeah, when it comes to the the cop issue, were you thinking something maybe along the lines of extra training or restrictions, or how do you plan to you know aid that issue? I would definitely say extra training, and I think we should be. Able, I want to pass a bill to get rid of Terry stops, so cops actually need you know a reason to stop you. You know, maybe you know you know you fit a description or something more other than hey, I know he's a felon, and he's driving a car or just walking. Let's stop him. So I think, you know, there needs to be more reasons behind what they do. And like I said, two weeks ago, I got into a boxing match with an officer because he didn't like what he what I said about him in front of my business. So, you know, I you know, I don't know if other businesses have had that. You know, if this officer is going around just challenging every, you know, random employee or owner of their business to a boxing match because, you know, I said something about his hairline, which, in fact, he did have a fucked up hairline. But, you know. Thank, thank you, Mr. How, how are you going to enforce that, Father Fox? How are you going to make the police, like, obey you? Internal affairs! I mean, I can't... I mean, they're, I can't. they're, a, branch of, they're a branch of the police. Like, how are you going to actually make the police obey, like, the things that you want them to do? Not if I'm there. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, if you're saying it like that, how are we going to do anything with anything? You know what I mean? If we can't, you know, well, like the, I'm trying to work around the, crowd, the please, police department. Please, uh, the police department in the past has been very obstructionist in city council. They have been very uh, sort of even refusing to work with the city council. Like, you know, what, what I think, do you bring to the table? I think I have a good relationship with most officers. Officers know me and respect me, and I don't think any of you have ever been respected or known by PD. And I'm not a cop. from the ones that beat you in the face in the street. Hey, other than that, you know, shit happens. I get it. Sometimes I'm a dickhead, you know, and I've shot and stabbed him, you know, to his own. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't hold no hard feelings. Can I, can I answer that question? Yeah, go ahead, the, Mr. Ziegler. He did open it up to all the other candidates, so. I believe I heard through the grapevine that uh, a lieutenant detective is opening up a, a privately owned uh, source, I want to say, a privately owned uh, company to teach officers about um, better case law and knowing how, when to use it and how to use it. I feel like uh, the city could definitely help out with that and allow for citizens to go in and get some classes about that and better know how they could protect yeah, their own rights against unrightful police. police. We're not paying more tax. No, this, is a, pri this, is, this is a private This is a private contract among one of the police officers. This is not funded by the police department. Ooh. Again, I think the solution is what I'm doing. You get better public defenders, you get better news reporters, you get a better, robust system that is in opposition to police abuse and police abuse will be brought down 
Mr. Hightower, we need what corrupt happens judges. when those officers kill a suspect in custody? What do you do then? A public defender cannot help somebody who's dead. No, no, no the no, district no, attorney. Yeah, tell that to rats. prosecute that officer. The only issue is the district attorney's office has been as spineless as Mayor Schumel had. Uh, so then Schum more, Schum so yeah. more money goes into the government and not actually helping the person that died? No, what I'm saying is I would also hold the district attorney's office to a certain level of standard. I want to see officers that do stuff like that get appropriately punished. I want to make sure the citizens, citizens in the city, you know, a news reporter can obviously report upon this horrendous sure. crime in the scenario that you just made up. Uh, like, this, this me, situation I know, is... I know people that have died in police custody. I, I am as well. You don't know nothing, custody. white boy. Cate. Please, and like sorry. I said, I wish, <laughs> wish that we had reporters who were able to sort of bring that issue to light and actually represent, like, Mr. Fox here and his friends were right, and I attempted to go down and uh, talk to them to try and work out what I could do as a city council member. Fortunately, it didn't work out. Yeah. Yeah, we ended up oh, sorry, I, I, I'm going to let you finish. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out. Uh, they, were, they were too angry. They wanted to riot. So I had to sort of step back, but I did take it into city council. I did try my best to make sure that we could sort of discuss what was happening, and then Schumer died. So uh, what we need is just a good mayor. We need a good, strong mayor with, like I said, a backbone and someone who can actually hold the police accountable. Okay, yeah. Uh, I was just going to I was gonna interject real quick. And that I said, so... Basically, that you think the scenario Mr. Ziegler brought up is a fantasy and not a reality in the city? No, I have seen it happen. Uh, I've seen police abuse rights. I've represented no less than 10 people for the who have their rights abused by the police department and successfully won every single case. Uh, I am very much aware of the issues that police sort of face in policing the city. I'm so glad to hear that there is a private institution that may be trying to train the police better. But as I keep saying, opposition is the, the best way of making sure that the police are at their best. Public defenders, news reporters, the Community Trust Act. I, uh, I personally believe that the government, sure, the government can hold these police account officers accountable. But the real question is, minutes matter. Seconds matter when minutes are the law. It's, it's more or less an officer can take all of a minute to kill somebody. It's not very hard. I believe the citizens should better defend themselves. They should know the knowledge of how to defend themselves when it comes to law and physically. I oh, mean, that's what you said. I believe in better police, arming eh? citizens. Yeah. One of my policies are bigger guns. I I yeah, like bigger people. guns. If bigger I could, guns, if eh? one of the policies I'd like to implement are citizens being allowed to get bigger firearms, such as yeah. Shotguns. I, I do have a question through, about this. Going through the process of getting permits and being mentally evaluated, of course, and through a right price. Uh, How do well, you swear we're gonna away... do one second, Hightower, one second. We're just going to yeah. open it up to all the candidates. Uh, what is your opinion on um, citizens being able to acquire long arms? We'll go, uh, we'll, we'll start with Mr. Delino and then move left uh, to Mr. Hightower, then Father Fox. I mean, personally, I believe that... Uh... Big guns obviously are needed. Uh, the Second Amendment is there to make sure that uh, if the military or police departments were to try to overthrow to citizens, you. that we have the weaponry there in order to uh, defend against it. So I believe that uh, with uh, with proper paperwork and mental evaluations and things of that, that I, I believe that it's very important that we have that. Mr. Delano, are you just re are you just copying exactly what I'm saying, oh, or shit. do you have you one of your own twists you want to put on what I'm saying? Well, I not really. I mean, I agree with you. I don't mind saying that. Thank you. Thank I mean, it's you, a pretty just, it's a it pretty broad. Said that. I didn't hear but. shit that guy said. Uh, Mr. Mr. Hightower, go ahead. Apollo, you know, remember I attempted to open a gun store essentially to put firearms in the hands of that were at the time restricted. I worked with uh, a judge, uh, the DA, uh, the commissioner of the police. I even gave a key to the chief of police to look into my workings at any time. I was very open and transparent with them. And the police still tried to violate my Fourth Amendment rights and steal my property. Uh, and then, in fact, try to arrest me for being so open and honest with them. Uh, I don't think 
that it squares at all that Ziggler is saying that he wants people to have long arms and also represents the police party. I think this is I never, an I empty never promise. The police. I, never said I think this is an empty promise one way or the other. I think uh, Hebrew's lying, and this what is proof, not going to actually you, be pushed through, or the police are I'm going to make this uh, so impossible they will they will absolutely derail any plans Mr. he has Hightower, to actually repeal proof, this act. What proof do you have that this is not going to come to fruition? What historic evidence. All? Historic evidence of me or historic evidence of others? Because I am the not police like department. Others. The police department. Okay, thank you very much. At what point in this entire debate have I said I work with the police department? Not once. Just because I have backing of the police, police does not mean I work for them. The majority of your yeah. party is the police force. Like, you're okay. beholden to their choices. They chose okay. you to represent them. Uh, yeah. I, would, I would like to point out that Chief Silver is not a member of the Libertarian Party, to my knowledge. Like and he was something. the one who violated your rights, Mr. Hightower, yeah. in that specific case. Um, and he's still in that position. Uh, unless you're planning on removing Chief Silver, I don't believe that this, this act is ever going to work out, unfortunately. Holy crap. Wait. Well, I would I love to see. Your personal personal opinion and your Personally, I well, would I'm love to see that. people who own businesses or homes having access to shotguns for them to defend those properties, uh, making sure those guns stay on those properties. And any time they are removed, obviously that would be a violation of the law. So I think that believe, you do not believe in open carry, Mr. Hightower. Is that what you're saying? You do not believe. I believe a that the law is. The Which current, is a violation of somebody's Second Amendment right to right the to bear The current law that exists, the National Firearms Act, is pretty robust. I think it it's does a good job. Policies. It's in my policies. It's in my policies to revoke right. the National Firearms Act. I know. Act. And I doubt you will. And you doubt I will. And I doubt you will. I extremely doubt, doubt you will. On this debate, swear. Okay. I Thank doubt you will say a lot of things that you've been saying. Wrap it up, John. Okay. Uh, it is Father Fox's turn. Father Fox, you may go ahead. I also believe that we should have access to the same firepower that the police have. Because obviously the police haven't, you know, if we, everyone says we can't be trusted with them, but the police also can't, obviously can't be trusted. They've been selling them, selling guns at the armory for, you know, for how many years now? Oh, shit. And also police evidence. So what I'm saying is if we can't trust them, why, why won't they give us a chance to have the same right as them? So we should be able to do the same thing as they do and protect ourselves and protect our businesses. Up and Adams has been up and being... up and Adams has been shot up countless times, and I've had to defend it with you know my mere little shitty pistol from the store. So I think you know if five or six people roll in, I need at least a shotgun or M16 to defend the business. You know it's my right as American to open carry and have access to the same thing the government has access to, just in case to stop you know police brutality and them trying to take over. If y'all you know remember the Morello movement. You know, if it wasn't for citizens being armed with, you know, M16s and shotguns, we would have been taken over by communists. So. Mr. Fox, yeah! I have a question. Do you agree that the uh, that the citizens should be armed with military-grade equipment, such as F1, F14 Raptors, and other um, military-grade equipment? Yes. I want a tank. Very base. Very base. Very I want a base. tank. What does it get? Do we get nuclear I weapons? Do we vote for you? Whoa, we got a little alliance on stage. And can I own my new own nuclear weapon in this libertarian paradise? Yes, this isn't yes. Britain. Why not? Okay, Why not? all right. This isn't Britain where we attack and enforce bullshit things. There's yeah. a reason we revol revolted Maybe against Britain. So why do we want another fucking Brit back in that's, that's a sensible idea. Yeah, we'll arm the yeah, moon yeah, yeah. kid. Seventeen seventy-six. Everybody, remember that date when? Hey, I tell you what, no, no one's deal. gonna rob my store when I got a twelve gauge under it. Or a new yeah, I support that. I support businesses having access to shotguns. I think that this is a... Personally, I think that's a good idea. As long as they're heavily restricted to make sure that people don't abuse them. Give me a tank! Heavily restricted for Mr. Hightower is only allowing his friends to have it. That's a baseless accusation. No, I believe, Mr. Fox, <laughs> I would fight for your right to make sure that you have a shotgun in Up and Adam. I would make sure that individuals who own businesses would be able to have those, if I could. Yeah, yeah, we we will be opening up to audi audience uh, questions right after this, so please uh, keep your remarks to yourself. Uh, any other closing remarks? Any of the candidates um, the on the on specifically that that issue? No, fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna give uh, I'm gonna open it up to audience questions now. If you would like to ask a question, raise your hands, please. Okay. Uh, Let's see here. It's always fun. Bronx, 
Cowboy hat. Yeah, yeah, we'll do we'll do cowboy hat. Uh, but please, you've been speaking, you know. So <laughs> speak, speak speak now the and then eh? hold. The, uh, yes, speak now and then Let hold the your man peace afterwards, the please. Go uh, ahead, sir. I need, my question is. What are we gonna do for illegal aliens and trying to get uh, immigration and uh, immigrant workers their green cards? What do you guys got? We'll start with Fox. You have 30 seconds, Father Fox. I believe the process of becoming a uh, you know citizen should be a lot easier. Like my cousin has stated, you know it's hard for you know people to come over here, get started in a whole new land. This land is free, and they should be able to have the same chances as the rest of us have. So I think there should be programs for people who are here illegally or want to come here. I think they have the same rights we should. We were already here. All right, Mr. Hightower, your turn. Uh, having done it myself, I believe in uh, work to citizenship personally. I want to see a farmers' union. So if people do come in and they don't have, you know, any anything like that, those camps. unions are empowered to make sure that their workers are citizens can actually, you know, come here, live here, uh, and work here. All right, uh, Mr. Duino. I mean, obviously, I support uh, people being able to come here uh, legally and making it way easier. Uh, personally, my uh, mother and father came over from Italy, and uh, they faced a lot of uh, tribulations trying to come over. Not very easy. Not very easy. I'd like to see it uh, come easier any way, any way it can. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Ziegler. Yeah, I would just like to say my beliefs are going to be about the same as Mr. Father Fox, but Mr. Hightower, what it sounds like to me is work and you shall be free for your policy. I mean, last I checked, we don't live in North Korea, nor do we live in Soviet Russia. I fairly upset Mr. Ziegler's comments, and he's trying to perform any hit job he can on me, and it's making him look a little bit desperate. So I'm just going to not, I'm, I'm not, not going to reply to that, personally. Just, I'm, I agree. I'm just I agree. commenting on some of your policies. He just asked you a question, cabron. Yeah, Mr. Ziegler would say that. Oh, All right. Me, trust me. <laughs> Th thank you. Uh, uh, please raise your hands, audience, if you have a question. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna hear from Murphy. Let's see what uh, this guy has to say. Is oh, that Murphy that. in the back? Oh, fuck yeah, that. fuck his opinion. Hey. Everyone's hey yes, everyone has a right to speak. Murphy, Murphy, Murphy. Except for Murphy. Let him speak. Let him speak. For once, I can actually agree with Mr. Hightower here. Uh, Murphy, go ahead and ask your question, please. Yeah, I, I'm interested. I'm interested in Mr. Hightower's work, and you shall be free thing. Is that what the Nazis did? Right. Yeah. No. Uh, it doesn't exist. It's a thing that Ziegler made up over there. Oh, no, I did not say anything saying. about oh, Nazis. Yes, no, I I, no, I said that I would like to see people who you said you'd aren't like to see having camps. green green visas be able to sort of work their way, being able to be a citizen of the state. I don't think that's an insane thing to say. I'm not trying to build camps. I'm not trying to build work camps for people. I'm saying if people are doing this work and being underpaid, then a strong union should be able to pay those people better and be able to help them legally. Do you believe in flooding jobs no, with not, illegal Not right immigrants? now, Murphy. You asked a question. All right. Do you believe uh, in raise... flooding jobs with illegal immigrants? That's what I'm hearing right now? Go, go ahead, Mr. Yeah. Okay. If you'd like to respond, Mr. Hightower, you may. No, I'm not dignifying that one. All right, fantastic. Everyone, please uh, raise your hands if you have a question. We're going to take a few more here. Yeah, he's not responding because he's uh, you, you, sir, in the yellow. All right, uh, this is for everyone. Uh, so what do you guys plan to do to lower the rate of crime? Okay, Mr. Ziegler, you'll be going first this time. Well, as any good libertarian, as I said before, I believed in... Rearming the people. Right now, all people could legally buy are 1911s, SSF smack robs, and um, what else do we have on there? High browning. So, personally, I believe that the citizens should be able to carry long arms and uh, shotguns. I mean, can I hold a 44? Did, did I hear somebody with a question? No, it, Mr. Delino, it's your turn now. Uh, I also believe that uh, obtaining a legal firearm should be a lot easier. And uh, like I said before, I believe in uh, the police reform. I believe that uh, the police department should be checked thoroughly in order to uh, make sure everybody's doing their job correctly, try to keep everybody safe. To make sure we got a gun, you know. Okay, Mr. Hightower. Uh, personally, I like to tackle the root cause of crime, which is, uh, you know, uh, 
wealth disparity in like or not like not having opportunity to work uh i would like to see more businesses i like to see more people given the chance to step up and do what they think the city needs and get paid for it and i think there's, there's more job security there's more safety in terms of you know wealth in the city i think that hopefully crime will go down and lastly you uh, father fox uh, I agree pretty much with Hightower, with him saying the whole, you know, I think we should educate, you know, place people who live in high crime areas, bring more education back to them and more job opportunities. And also arming our civilians, like, you know, I don't know if you guys have heard, but I know a lot of uh, trash, trash truck drivers have been getting robbed by groups of people. So I think arming them with shotguns or an M16, you know, would help them because you can't really do shit when you got a pistol and five or six dudes come running at you. Sorry. I, uh, I have a quick question. <laughs> go ahead, Mr. Ziegler. <laughs> Can we go ahead and pull up some statistics about the education rate in low-income areas? I mean, last I checked, it's kind of low. So we're going to go ahead and educate them more? I mean, they already don't want to be educated about anything. You calling me so you're saying people from low-income areas willfully choose to be ignorant and commit crime? No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying... Purse, I won't let this That's slide. the way you were phrasing it. Areas. I went to trade school, asshole. asshole. You're suggesting that people in areas where education's already failing. So it's just in people why... that don't have chance. Yeah, Sorry, you're giving up on your uh, citizens. Education. Yeah, it doesn't. This I'm doesn't just track. I'm, I'm just not very big. Right, very well. We'll uh, we'll wrap that up now. Uh, let's hear from the man here in the brown suit. Me? Yeah. All right. Yes. So my name is Santino Fontana. I am uh, president of the official union of Los Santos, and uh, I would just like to ask. Um, you know, uh, w first of all, I would like to say that, uh, you know, I've been running this union for a few months now and uh, we've been around. So with that being said, um, I want to each, I want to ask each candidate what their opinion is on the union. And I mean, you know, since we represent the working man, how are they going to support the union, which represents the working man? Uh, we'll start with father Fox. Please keep it brief. Cause we have touched on this a little bit. All right. Uh, uh, I guess the first place I would start, because I haven't never spoke to you before, I would sit down and talk to you directly and see what the issues are. And, you know, all the thing I've heard so far from, you know, just different people talking about jobs, but I haven't heard exactly what's going on. So I'd sit down and talk to you and get to the basis of what your needs are and what your guys need and do whatever I can in my power to help the best I can. That's it. Mr. Hightower. Uh, I mean, as I said, I really want to codify a bunch of unions with the city council and the government. I want to make sure that people are aware these, these unions exist. I want to make sure that these unions themselves are, are well organized and well supplied to make sure that the people working for them are paid well. Uh, and I, I mean, that's pretty much it. Uh, Mr. Delano. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, I believe that these people uh, should have seats. Uh, obviously, union heads need to be out there. They need people to know who they are, what they represent, and I think uh, seats would allow Yo, them to uh, push all their policies Thank and get their names out there to make it uh, easier I for people to get jobs within these unions. And lastly, Mr. Ziegler. Um, I would go by the same doctrine as Mr. Fox is going by. I'd like to sit down with you, talk to you, get better to know you, know your people, know who's, uh, know the company a little bit more. And I just overall want to see the quality of work, uh, make sure it's good. Make sure you <laughs> I mean, granted, I don't want to see any government involvement, but this is just on a man-to-man -man level. I'd see as much as I could do to help. Okay, uh, let's see here. Um... We're going to go with uh, Mr. Warren, and then next we're going to go with uh, the man in the suit in the back. Hey there. Most of you guys know me. Uh, I'm now Lieutenant Warren. I uh, try to outreach through the community outreach division, you know, that I'm trying to put together. I have Hi, a question guys. for all of you guys. <laughs> I have a question for all you guys. Go, go ahead, please. I, so, yes. uh, Mr. Hightower, you made claims that I wasn't doing my job and that you know that you made a lot of claims about i just any facts to back those up because i, I just sorry what were the claims could you could you repeat them to me you're the one that made them i just know no, kind of yeah but if you've heard them and you're asking me about them what were the claims you were saying that we didn't do our job that we didn't like we're being lazy
taking on the job, stuff like that, or whatever it was you were saying along those lines. I think I you're misinterpreting my words. I think you're considering I'm, I'm you. I think you've. So, I mean, you've. You've like, heard yeah, my words and you're changing them in your head. The, sure, I mean, yeah, if, go, if go you ahead, Mister Warren. So what I was going to say was, you made all of these different claims earlier about internal affairs. However, I'm here to both ask you a question and attest that anytime we get an IA complaint, it is seen through. Now, what is your plan? Because I know you proposed that uh, watchdog bill before that got shot down very badly because it was actually unconstitutional. What's your plan to address IA? And I'd like to hear from everybody. Because right. Uh, it actually hasn't been it hasn't been shot down. It got it got renamed the Community Trust Act with the help of uh, under Sheriff Beck. Wait, Miss Warren, you've asked your question. Please let Miss. It Hightower isn't. Answer. It isn't actually unconstitutional. If we look at a number of states, there are about twelve states that do it a lot more liberally than the Act does, and about half of the actual states of the United States that have reclassified this information because they view it as a, it's in the interest of public good. Sometimes your rights can be waived in the interest of public goods, like felons can have weapon license removed, even though we have a right to bear arms, in the interest of public good. So these records are declassified, again, in the interest of public good, to make sure that IA is, like you say, doing its job. I mean, I personally filed a complaint against an officer once in IA, and it magically vanished into the system. There was no record of it, there was nothing ever said, there was nothing ever done. I want to make sure that doesn't happen again. To anyone in the city. Yeah, crooked cop. You made All a right. claim there. I'd like the chance to. No, no, Mr. Answer. Warren. I'm sorry. I've asked your question. You can wait. Uh, like uh, Murphy wait. has kindly waited for your next question. Okay, well, uh, go like ahead. So, I, I would like to touch up on Mr. Warren's I'd question. I'd like everybody to answer it. Yeah, Ziggler, Ziggler, make it make it short, please. So far, I mean, I haven't heard any complaints about IA. I haven't heard that you guys are, you know. Personally, I haven't heard anything about it. Um, but as mayor, I would touch up on you guys i'd make sure you guys are really you know thoroughly going through investigations i would like to look into your documents see everything you have question the officer and just overall you know get a better understanding i would also allow for the people that have access to these ia documents too with transparency in my policies thank you mr ziggler uh we'll go with the man in the suit like i said in the back there all right admittedly los santos crime rate has been absolutely skyrocketing specifically shootings within los santos city limits at least two of you on that stage are willing to arm citizens with both shotguns and M16s. How would you ever plan to do that, number one? Number two, what would the education be for those individuals? Because with the alarmingly high uh, crime rate in this town, what is to stop somebody from legally purchasing an M16, like a garbage man, and then selling them to members that uh, might not be as savory, to members of the society that are, are dirty? I mean, if you're going to be making those type of long arms easily accessible for citizens in this city, do you guys understand that uh, the amount of those guns that are going to end up in the wrong hands is exponentially high? You, they yourself, already have. All four of you have admitted that the police department in this city is in shambles and needs work. Now you want to add more load to their work? When they can't Nobody even manage that. it alone with right, missiles? Back, back away from me, breasting. I would, uh, yeah, I would breasting, like to answer this man. question. Yeah, Mr. Ziggler, you go first. Yeah. We'll hear from Father Fox next. Yeah, so one of the biggest po one of the biggest doctrines, I believe, in, is fighting fire with fire. Um, I see arming more citizens allows for them to combat these people that are unlegally and unlawfully owning these firearms. Are we really going to go and justify what criminals are doing? and punish civilians who are abiding by the law? No, it's hypocrisy. That's what I believe it is. You know, I... If you really want me to work with the police here, and you really want me to reform them, then I would be more than happy than reforming the goon squad. All right, Mr. Fox. I mean, the fact of the matter is, M16s and shotguns are already flooded the streets, and people already have them, so... Us arming your regular citizens is going to help defend the criminals who already have them. So it's in the best public interest for, you know, if half the city already has them, why shouldn't the law-abiding citizens have them? And, you know, most people got them pretty easily what through dirty cops. I have have guns and automatic gun usage? I have some evidence I can actually touch up on go, that. Go ahead, Mr. Ziegler, but... Um, um, Yes. I have witnessed people. I've witnessed people with these firearms out in public. <laughs> I've witnessed them having them 
illegally, unlawfully, all right? I've owned them. And to touch up on your question about, you know, the whole legal standard of this, can we go ahead and pull up states that have these sort of constitutional rights for these people to bear these arms? Can we go ahead and look at their cities, see what their crime rate is? I'm sure it's pretty decently low than our crime rate. So if you really want to go into that debate, I'm more than welcome to. I'm welcoming it with open arms. We'll move on from that for now. We, we might <laughs> circle. See what you did there. We're going to ask another, uh, ask somebody else from the audience. We're going to go with uh, the gentleman here in the leather jacket, and then we'll have Vanessa Banks there for the next question. You can put your arm down. Uh, you have to speak sure up, we sir. can't hear you. We just have to approach a stand. I think he just fell asleep or something. Get his arms up sir. too long. Okay, um... We'll have Vanessa go first. We'll circle back to you, sir. Vanessa, go ahead, please. Uh, okay. Can you... Hello, sorry. Uh, can you uh, hear me? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll okay, circle, circle back to you, sir. This question is only for uh, the Libertarian Party candidates. Um, this is kind of a two-parter, if that's okay. Um, do you, um, Mr. Ziegler, uh, know about um, uh, Jack Bennett? Or Beckett, Beckett. A uh, uh, Jack Beckett, yes, the under sheriff for the Los Angeles uh, Sheriff County. Okay, um, so he claims that the Libertarian Party is has about eighty uh carded members that a majority of them are going to vote for you, and that they are a hive mind that represent the PD. Do you agree with his statement? Oh, that sure. A lot of the voters that are voting for me are PD. That is what he said. Yes. No, I don't agree with that statement. A lot of our voters are civilians. Father Fox, you have anything to say about that? I ain't got nothing to do with me. I'd I mean, like to I've mention that uh, Under Sheriff Beckett is the founder of the Libertarian Party in Los Santos, by the way. Yeah, that's, that's fine. You can mention that all you want. I'm just saying, you know, just because there's a decent amount of cops in the Libertarian Party does not mean, you know, we're being puppeted or controlled by them. It's just, it's fake news, it's fake media, and if you want to talk more about it, I'll be here after the debate. Yeah, he, he's running for the police. All right, sir, in the leather, in the leather jacket, go ahead now. Okay. My, my question has nothing to do with guns or, or corrupt police departments. Um, the last time I spoke about, spoke up here, um, all that was done that was the hospital was moved three inches to the right. I noticed recently that our fire department has been recently refunded, but they cannot perform medical services. Is there, do you have any type of plan when it comes to upgrading uh, med medical vehicles to medical supplies for our local EMT and paramedics? We'll start with Mr. Ziegler for that. You know what? This has not been brought to my attention, and I'm very glad that you brought it to my attention, Mr. Baker. And no one has ever came up to me and said anything about the medical um, practices or anything about that. I will look into everything I can about restaffing the medical uh, facilities, because as we all know, there are never, never any doctors or EMTs on available anymore, which frankly is quite upsetting. I mean, I've had, I've had a, a loved one die, or almost die because you know, EMTs were minutes away. I think, you know, medical is very important. I believe that we should, uh, you know, train our fire department on how to do basic medical and probably advanced medical. I, I think they should be equipped with everything they need to be equipped with. Mr. Delino. Uh, personally, I believe the same. I think uh, there should be a lot more people out there getting uh, proper medical training. And I believe that the uh, fire department should be uh, reinstated uh, under this, uh, you know, at least allowing them to give uh, EMT services to the people that need them. Uh, that's about it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hightower. Uh, I was very saddened by uh, Fire Chief Mitnick resigning. Uh, he wrote a very eloquent resignation letter that went very deeply into detail about what the fire department was facing. And until that moment, we hadn't really, we hadn't really been informed. Uh, he he was very quiet 
during most meetings until his resignation. Uh, but afterwards, I very much made it one of my priorities to help out. Uh, I think Mr. Dex, uh, with his sort of sitting on the council. Uh, when it comes to firefighters and the ambulance, I do think it's a very thankless job. I think that they, they face a lot of stress and uh, a lot of difficulties. I would like to see more. I'd like to see more incentives to hire on. I think that the city Listen, could actually me? help with that. I think that we could use funding to <laughs> help with that. In the back there. I would like to see sort of uh, I like to see so both departments uh, continue to evolve. Um, oh. Yeah, and that's, that's all. And Father Fox, please keep it brief. Did you say Grandfather Fox? <laughs> no, Father Father Fox, if you have anything to say on the fire department. Uh, I think it'd be good to have our, you know, firefighter at least be able to do basic medical, especially since I think most of the medical needs is on the south side. At least, you know, you know, emergencies are happening more on the south side, so it'd be better, be better if they were more, if we could get like a, you know, more EMTs down there, or at least a station to, you know, at least get to our, you know, people in need faster, because I think it is a little ridiculous, five minutes waiting for an ambulance after you've been shot. Right. All right. Thank you. Um, please raise your hands if you have a question. Hey, how long is it going to take right. for this fucking idiot to realize the debate's the other way? <laughs> Turn the fuck around. Are you fucking Sir, please stop shouting. I can't breathe with your bad breath. I think that, that man in red actually is paying attention again. <laughs> All right. Okay. Mur Murphy, nobody else uh, seems to have any questions. Okay. Please. Uh, so someone's also that young woman. Yeah. Uh, I question for Mr. Hightower regarding... Yes. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't see anybody else. Go ahead. Mr. Murphy, go ahead, please. But my question is for Mr. Hightower regarding his uh, plan for businesses. He wants to help out businesses. Yet his real estate company is overcharging for thing for simple things such as locks. He charges us one thousand dollars per lock that is implemented inside of a customer's business. I think it's outrageous. And I this think is true. This is true. Yeah. Uh, this is actually this is false money. and He's misrepresentation. The thousand dollars is to do the entire building. Uh, the thousand dollars to do the entire building, not per log. That's ridiculous. It's still, it's still extremely overpriced. I also want to mention, uh, Mr. Fox here has a day one fire Donald Murphy act on his bill, but the police target me frequently because they know I'm more effective. They know that as a person, as a mayoral candidate, if I took this position, they have a lot of worry. I mean, as you've seen, you've repeatedly asked me questions as four candidates up here, trying to pick apart my conversations. Are you are you targeting uh, Mr. Murphy as a spokesman for the people? No, I'm not. I'm just suggesting that I think that for some reason I seem to very deeply upset officers who are here presently. All right, uh, ma'am in the purple, you can go ahead. I'm very sorry about that. Yeah, you made a pretty mean claim against the entire PD. I don't care, quite frankly. Go ahead, ma'am in the purple. <laughs> oh. Oh wow! Yeah, she's really quiet. You may have to speak up, ma'am. Uh, ma she said there were five officers in underwear that made her uncomfortable or something. I would, I would like to, I would like to what talk about fuck? this. Uh, Mr. If, uh, Mr. If Ziegler, go ahead. Silver don't know about this. Now that I hear about this, I will. Uh, I will the question start wasn't properly heard. Could you, could you repeat the question for us, ma'am, please, so that we can all make sure that we get it from your perspective, please. Ma'am, if you could approach a stage, that would be lovely, please. Can you hear me? Also wonderful. Yes, wonderful. Yes, yes wonderful. thank you. Right. So last night, we were out to dinner as a, uh, a big group of friends were out to dinner. Five officers on duty and off duty came to the establishment wearing only their underwear. And when we told them that it was kind of uncomfortable oh. to see them out and about in just their underwear. I'm sorry, I'll ask better questions the next time, Grant. And they started humping what? a teddy bear as we got back. Yes. <laughs> that was very uncomfortable. What would you do to hold accountability to these officers and improve public relations with the community? These are the people that we're supposed to trust with our safety, and 
Wait. This is the type of thing that we're met with. Yes, I, I would I would I would like to interject. Uh we Ops have were forced touched, fucking teddy bears. <laughs> we've talked a lot about police reform already. Yeah, this has this to be addressed. Be the final I question would, that yes. we will yield like about the police department, but relations? What I would ma'am yes, public relations? Exactly, Mrs. Ziegler, Ziegler go ahead. This is the would, last oh time God. we will be talking about the police for like, God's sake. I would like to say Not that now bears. that this has come to the knowledge of oh, teddy bears. Everyone, now that this has come to the knowledge of all the candidates, I would like to announce that me, I would like an immediate investigation into those officers and find out who they were and bring justice to you. No one, I repeat, no one should be harassed in such a way by an authoritarian figure such as the police in this city. And possibly I'd like to say that their jobs will... I, I'd when like to ask, do any other candidates have anything else to say? I, other I than, do, yes. Yes, go uh, ahead, Mr. Hunter. Excuse me, ma'am. Did you did you issue a report to IA, or did any of your friends issue a report to IA? <clears throat> Sorry, ma'am. Did you did you issue any reports please, to the please, IA? Can you hear me? Yes, no, ma'am. We, we were instructed to go see the secretary to issue a report there, and an officer would reach us. It has been uh, nearly 24 hours since doing so. I've been awaiting an officer to reach out to us to take our report. Did you feel very comfortable? Right. Did you feel very comfortable issuing this report to IA? I, Actually, I it was not issued hope. to IA. It was issued to a report taker. It never has gotten to us. You, How often are those not, reports checked? If I may ask. It is not common practice to issue uh, reports to that specific thing. Call an officer, ask them so, to IA. So what it sounds like, so what it sounds like to me, what it sounds like, I'm sorry, I just want to, I just want to get her perspective. Right. Okay, well, yeah, Mr. Hightower, please proceed with the question. This is dragging yeah. on far too much. Yeah. We'll talk afterwards. I just love you, Mr. but. Would you feel comfortable doing this again? Do you feel like something? Do you think like this is something you would do again? Would issue a, a report that you feel like oh, you're comfortable okay. with IA handling your, your situation. What a group of sick fuck. Bring back the um, Riviera. I, I feel uncomfortable um, being as how it was five officers. Um, I'm hoping that it can be resolved in a, a timely fashion, but we'll see. This Sounds is like what this is what officers. the community trust act is for. This is what I want to make sure. This is one of my priorities to get someone <laughs> sitting on the the board of the state funding board. <laughs> <for, laughs> To make sure that these reports are taken, handled, and that you know what has been done. Rumors, or at least you know that uh, every, you know every single candidate, done. every anyway. single candidate on the stage tonight has said that they want the reports to actually be checked, and we've brought it up about a dozen times. So, um, like I said, that's the last we're going to touch on police. Now we're going to have one more question. Right. I actually one have more a question. question for the man in the black and white. N Mrs. Ziegler, please save it for now. Uh, Ma'am in the black and white, if you'd like to ask your question, that'll be the last question of the night. Thank you. I'm not Judge Nelson, but you're the judge. Where is Mr. Hightower? Oh, okay. Well, fantastic. It's Anyways. all good. That's that's great. Okay, thank you, everybody, for coming to the debate. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I would like to top, on, or top go. off on uh, Mr. Hightower. I'm, I'm fine, Gilding. That's one long one last the point, Mr. Question. Ziegler. One last point. That uh, Community Trust Act, is that the same one that you said... Uh, justifies the act of waiving people's constitutional rights? No, no, it's the Constitution itself justifies the act of sometimes waiving constitutional rights in the okay, interest where, of public good. At? No, 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 where listen, in the interest of public good is a term that you can look that up, you can sort of look at yourself. Yeah, I'm, you I'm know. not, I'm not, I did not. Uh, that's not for the for example, the woman asking. over there, she feels uncomfortable with the police now. That's, she's worried, she's please, worried that police Mr. officers Hightower, may do inappropriate Hightower, things. Mr. Let me Hightower, finish Hightower, answering please, your question if you're going to ask please me a question. Answer the question I asked I'm answering you right now. Very specific The Constitution of the United States. Under which article, okay, under which paragraph, under which sentence? I don't unfortunately have that in my pocket right now. Can we just oh, box from there? Oh, it it's, it's in the no. preamble, I believe. Could you tell me? Could you tell me like which now. specific constitutional rights allow someone to have their Second Amendment suspended? Which, which, which amendment? Which, which constitutional nowhere. right? Could you? I do not you think that. nowhere? You don't believe that? So Anyways, you're just a full interpretation of the original. 
Okay. As I was saying, I do not believe Mr. Hightower. I, I feel like it's unjustified for him to say it's justified to waive people's constitutional rights. At which point does it become a national emergency? What do we state as a national emergency? Somebody jaywalk? Okay. No, public jaywalk. good is something different to a national emergency. Public good. So what do we justify for example, public good? The public good. That lady over there feels unsafe in public because some officer may strip down, run over, and start fucking a teddy bear in front of her. In the interest of public good, she deserves to know whether or not the officers were disciplined, whether or not she can feel safe in this city. That's the public good. Okay. Uh, this isn't this isn't 1776. I know you're locked there. I know you're locked there politically and mentally, but this is this is 1977. We can help people. But what we could do there is offer more transparency with the people and the government. There doesn't need to be a secret curtain, an iron curtain between the people and the government. If anything, the people and government should work together. There isn't. That's all the Community Trust Act solves. The Community Trust Act to me sounds like getting rid of people's rights in the favor of government. That's what it sounds like to me, Mr. Hightower. I don't think you understand it, Mr. Ziegler. Exactly what it is. All right, I don't thank think you. you understand thank it at all. Or the Constitution, wrap, wrapping unfortunately. That up. Wrap, wrapping it up. All right, thank you very much. Uh, everyone, again, thank you, for, thank you for coming to the debate. I was the police, I but this entire it. time I've been against the police. That makes we dragon. Yeah. Right. 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 You think you won? I don't fucking know, fool. Hopefully, I'm, wait. I'm drinking. That shit got boring. Fuck you, Ziggler. I know. I got tired. I gotta take off my glasses one sec.